Hi, and welcome to episode 11 of the Hidden London Hangouts. My name's Alex, and we have a certain end of term feel to our hangout today. As you can see, I'm not even dressed in anything other than a t-shirt, but it's gonna be a great little episode. As always, I don't do this on my own. I've got a team of three splendid London Transport Museum experts, doyens of everything. They are wonderful. So first of all, hi, Chris Nix. Hi, Alex, nice to see you again. You well? Yes, and you're all laid back in your seat. Is this end of term thing? It, it does have an end of term vibe about it, doesn't it? In fact, I've um, I've also brought it because it's the end of term. You've got to bring your games into school, right? <laughs> and I know <laughs> you're an enormous uh, Johnson fan, so um, there you go. There's the Scrabble edition, which I wish I'd thought about earlier. Actually, it's quite a useful thing to have around for, uh, as part of these podcasts. But uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. I didn't realise, it must be at least 20 years that I've been fans of a huge Johnston. It's been really, really cool. Um, City Holloway, how are you today? Hello, I'm well. Um, oh God, I actually really miss, well, I actually really wanted to buy that Scrabble when it came uh, for sale at the London Transport Museum, but uh, it never, wait, am I in shop? Yeah. Right, it doesn't show me that I'm in shop at all. <laughs> Sorry. Can you do that again? <laughs> it's, it's just I don't you. Know what I'm doing. Uh, this is brilliant. Yep, City's in shot. No, I'm in shot now. This is great. Um, I don't know anyone who's watching has ever done Zoom meetings at work, but we do this every week and it foxes us every time we do this. It is just hysterical. So it's been a good week, City, apart from Zoom, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think Zoom's not happy with us this week for some reason, but we will plow on. We will plough on regardless. Laura Hilton Brown, how are you today? How's your Zooming? Uh, zooming is okay at the moment. How is everyone? I cannot believe this is episode 11. I mean, where has time, time, time gone? flown? Where has oh, time you? gone? I'll tell you something, we've been, we've been getting some really, really lovely messages. This one's from Jennifer Flannery. She says, these chats have been the only thing I've been able to concentrate on in a couple of months. Your presentation and demeanor team are joyous and hopeful and illuminating, like our roundels. Um, endless thanks for your completely charming work. You literally make life better and you made me a fan of tiles. Thank you. Um, Yay! Thank you um, today, we've decided to do something slightly different because it, it is a bit end of termy and we're going to go back to all of our venues and we're going to give you that picture that everybody wants to see. Siddy, Laura, Chris have been through the archives to find us the brilliant shots and uh, we're going to do that today with a few extra surprises as well. Do you remember in a previous episode, we were looking at those letters, the G and the F and the S on tiles, spot the G. We may have, and this may be the biggest development of this whole series that we might have an answer as to what they mean thanks to a very fabulous viewer and we'll hear some of your lovely messages as well so let's kick off straight away let's go back to Aldwych because this is where the fun begins city but before we've got the photos uh, I'm gonna shoot this one over to Laura who's got a, a video to show us Laura ah oh, thanks city so basically this is a little whistle stop tour of all of the uh, tours that we're doing, um, or Hidden London we're doing before lockdown. Um, so have, have a look at this and enjoy.
just goes to show the places that we've been to in the last few weeks. I tell you what we'll do, let's go down onto the Strand, find that amazing station that it all started off at, where we're all sort of getting to know each other. It was all quite polite and reserved and sensible. Cool, look where it's got us now. So Aldwych first. There we oh, are. Oh, look at that. Now, oh. you asked me to try and find the shot for each one, and it's so hard because we've got so many incredible photographs of each one of the sites. It's honestly, you know, hundreds of amazing photography. But this one I thought you'd like because this is the, um, the Eastern platform at Aldwych, which has been decommissioned since, you know, 1914. Um, but it's been used as a test bed for so many different stations and basically adhesives and all these kind of different designs. Uh, and here you can see Piccadilly Circus was actually yes. tested on Aldwych. And like they even had this adhesive that they had to test on there, which basically means they stuck the uh, tiles, which we talked about in a, co a couple of weeks ago, uh, right onto the existing old Leslie Green tiles, which, you know, is beautiful. It's quite amazing. Now, another thing we talked about when we first mentioned Aldwych, which was Laura's first kind of uh, event at Aldwych, which was the, um, the Blitz experience. <laughs> Laura, it should be Chris next about? dressing up, shouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not on this occasion, no. <laughs> <laughs> With your pith helmet. So, Laura, who, what, so these were characters, right? Yeah, so um, what's actually really cool is we found out on this Hangout that Alex was actually at this event in 2010 and yes. our paths crossed. Yeah, right, but we didn't, we didn't know at the time. So this is the ARP warden and he was in the um, ticket hall at Aldwych welcoming in the guests who obviously were shelterers for the event. Mm -hmm. um, and he, um, he was a great character, great actor, um, really set the scene. Um, and the tone, which was lovely. Um, he welcomed people in, he chatted about the kind of introduction to the event, and then we had the air raid siren and people descended down that, that spiral staircase. So yeah, phenomenal yeah. beginning to the event, love that. Well, this one, who's this lady? I loved, I loved her costume. I remember yeah. her. Do you? Yes, I remember so her, had, she was fabulous. Sorry, we had, yeah, we had a couple of characters and so the ARP warden was upstairs, um, as I said, welcoming people in and we had four, three or four characters down on the platform that kind of each owned a carriage of the 38 stock that we managed to get on platform down there. Which um, is here. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> See, I'm taking a moment there to remember because um, I mean, what we what we were allowed to do at this event, which is great as well, is um, dip every second light. You're not allowed to turn all of them off because obviously in an emergency evacuation, you need those on. Um, but just for a little bit of mood and tone and lighting, we could dip each second one. And I think it really, um, it really kind of, yeah, that, that shot's just lovely with the lighting there. Um, yeah. So yeah, each car carriage had one of the characters in it. And one of those beautiful 1938 stock trains. I love that train. It's gorgeous. The work it took to get there, Alex. The work. I bet it, it did. But we did it. We did it. Stunning. Stunning. Oh, gosh. So these are my photos for Aldwych. Love it. Absolutely beautiful station as well. I didn't know that bit about the tile testing either. I'm loving that. I absolutely love it. I never knew. See, we're learning something new. Look Second at your little week. face. I know. I'm, I don't know. I'm like a kid in a toy shop. Um, <laughs> The uh, next week, we went to Charing Cross, still getting to know each other, getting better. I think much of it, I was actually in the sunlight for most of it, but uh, it was pretty cool. And uh, what, do, what do we think of the, uh, the, the pictures that we got from Charing Cross City? Because there must have been some corkers there too. There were, and it was actually very difficult to choose good ones. So uh, I, will, I will show you what I chose now. In this one, I thought, let's not go for the mega photography ones. Let's talk a little bit about some of the events that take place down there. Because we mentioned that in the, in the, the episode when we talked about it. But, you know, some of the stuff we've actually been involved with, which was, for example, the 40th anniversary of the Jubilee Line, which is what this is from. And Chris, you took this photo, didn't you? I did, yeah. Um, we got to do uh, only a few of these events where we could run a special train into the disused platforms. We did that to commemorate the 40th anniversary uh, of the Jubilee Line opening and that, that station being part of it. The board that you can see on the platform was the original headboard which rode on the first train with Prince Charles in the cab. Uh, and um, it, 
that headboard only came to light as we discovered in Neasden uh, just at the start of the uh, 40th anniversary year. And so we, on, we only got hold of that last year and we were able to carry it on those special events uh, to commemorate 40 years. So it was, uh, it was really lovely. I yeah. love the, 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 the orange and grey formica. It's so 70s, isn't it? It's incredible. Yeah, that panelling is really quite sort of outdated, that kind of slightly off orange somehow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's brilliant. But yeah, that, that event was awesome. Um, Laura and I worked for those events as well. They, it was just strange being on a, a Jubilee Line train uh, at eight in the morning on a Sunday, and the destination was Charing Cross, which is something yeah. you have basically never heard before. The other image that I found was this one, which um, just shows you that this is Charing Cross pretending to be uh, a New York City subway. And it's still there now, isn't it? When you go down to that part of the station, that Front Street station is still hanging there. It's so cool. It you, is. for a second, suspend belief you could be in New York. Exactly, and, uh, and it's just kind of neat to see that you know, what the station's used for, as we mentioned in, in previous episodes, um, that, you know, it's used for filming, it's used for training, it's used for evacuation, it's used for all of these things. And it's just kind of fun to remind yourself for all the, you know, all the different stuff that basically that station. Uh, and I have to say, I've, I've always got to thank Laura as well, because when I went on that tour uh, for, the, for the patrons, I was invited as a special guest and I was allowed to ride in the cab of the train that went all the way from Charing Cross to Stanmore. I'm not joking. These people standing on the platforms of these stations as we went through must have thought this screaming, joyful child has just sat himself in the front of the cab. Mm. It was so good. So, so much fun that day. Yeah, it was awesome. So there we have stuff for Charing Cross. Good work. Um, another couple of messages from lovely people. This is from Andy J. Boo. Um, he says, um, it's the highlight of our week, these Hidden London Hangouts, especially my son as well. We watch it together. He's obsessed with the tube and is missing visiting London during lockdown. Um, the the trip cop uh, comment that you made in one of the episodes, he keeps asking me what I mean by that. Now, there's nothing apart from the seriousness of a safety device on the tube. Is that not right, Chris? Absolutely right. I mean, we, we've covered quite a few technical questions. Always nice to be able to clear those up. And part of the reason for me bringing the Scrabble set today is I know some people have been a bit confused about spellings uh, of some of these words. So it's rather good now because I, I can I can I can do this. Right. So we've got trip cock. Um, that's that's great. Now, in, in the chat room as well, I know some people struggled with the French word uh, maquette. Good. Okay, there we go. So we have that one. Um, some people were slightly confused about some of the words we use in association with Highgate as well. So you're like um, Carol Vorderman on Countdown. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Wood. Uh, That's good. I, I just need a, a quick, quick changeover. Um, the other one where you were advising about avoiding uh, unnecessary squeaking. Yes. Oh, wait, uh, greasing. Pull it yes. back, Chris. Pull it back. We can't see. Sorry, we can yeah. see bits. Oh dear. Uh, so unnecessary <laughs> uh, squeaking can be avoided by greasing your flange. Flange. Uh, well done. And the final one, which I know some people really struggled with the spelling of. I think uh, they were missing missing a vowel. Um, was the the train which we saw. At, uh, at Charing Cross, the grinder train. The grinder train, train. absolutely, so it's very important. Let's clear all of that up, yeah? Very, very I feel important. Like we've, we've, missed a, we've missed a trick. If we each have had a Scrabble board, we could have played like a Zoom four-way LTN Scrabble competition or oh, something. that would have been fun. You know, right? ne next definitely. series, Laura, that's a great idea. I, I think as well, I've been totting up the Scrabble scores while I was sat here to see who wins. Uh, Alex, you come in at 20 for Alex Grundon. Uh, oh. Laura, you, you're double barreled, so you, uh, I think you do, was it 20, <laughs> I know where this is going. Like that. And Siddy, you get 27, but I win with my full name at 30. Hold on a minute, what wait you a minute. the Icelandic name of Siddy? Exactly, like what, about yeah, what, yeah. About my, what about my I full don't... name? Yeah, there's not enough letters in the set for that, Siddy. That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll check it, I'll check it. 
<laughs> so Andy J. Boo, well, all I can say is with a bit of luck, your lovely son Isaac has got a little spelling test there across the bottom of the screen. So that's marvellous. And he's got his own little YouTube channel, actually, Isaac. It's called Ice Underground. And he does little films about the underground. It's so, so cute. A uh, uh, career in broadcasting clearly beckons for that boy. Uh, next up was Clapham South. We went down, down into World War II for Clapham South. We, just, we certainly did. Oh, get in. I think we had something similar, I think, in the, in the episode where we talked about the link staircase between the two, two levels of the, of, the, of the shelter itself and that staircase that linked all the way up to Clapham South Underground Station, now completely bricked off and there is no access for anyone wandering. Um, but I just love this shot because for such a long time uh, after we, we acquired the site, it was completely full of racking because of course, as people will remember, the site became an archive. Um, but only recently we cleared all that racking away and it just, it just brings it to life in a, in a different way for me, uh, looking at that photograph. And the other shot I have is just to show how close quartered those uh, sleeping arrangements were. It's kind no of social tricky. distancing there, is there? Uh, absolutely not. Like, it's probably, <laughs> you'd have to stand at either one of those red poles if you wanted to try to be socially distant at all. But it's quite nice because do you see on that, uh, on that you've got a little bit of remnant of, uh, of, these are all the original bunks. They've been slightly amended to become sh uh, uh, racking, basically. But you see those L's that are painted into, um, into the, the, the bunks. L spots, yeah. So the L uh, and the number right next to it, which has also been covered over and, and it's got different numbers on, but the L and the number is what would have been on your ticket to sh tell you which shelter you had to go to and where you were going to stay for the night. So L17 was bunk in lay number 17, and there you have I it. Love, I love it. Th there we go. That is the shot for our uh, series two publicity photograph, isn't it? The four of us laying on the beds. <laughs> we oh, can like do a, this. Like a really camp one where we're all sort of... I don't quite know who you're work. looking at when you say that, but, uh, but <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm as butch as they need to be, I think, is for this particular episode. Uh, all good. Also, Sorry, Chris, you were about to say just, something. Just to clear up. Uh, yeah, Alex, um, Sydney just mentioned the name of the shelter again, just to avoid confusion. It's L -E -Y, L-E-Y, right. not L-A-Y. He's yeah. taking his dictionary corner really seriously this week, isn't he? <laughs> he is, he's loving the scrabble. <laughs> Can I have one from the top and any other three, please? Yeah. Uh, Two like consoles, all the rest um, Yeah, <laughs> all good. Then after that, we went to Down Street, didn't we? Did indeed. Um, gosh, it seems like so, such a long time ago, but here we have some images from Down Street. We've had a lot of lockdown. So... Here we have the uh, lift shaft at And there's just something about this image that I just think is so raw and like, I don't know, it really captures the atmosphere in that place um, in, in quite a brilliant way. So you see the two bricked up entrances would have been the, the entry points into the lifts, which would have occupied the entire kind of, well, the, the entirety of the lift shaft. They were sort of trapezium shaped, so they fit into uh, the very wide lift shaft. Uh, but what you can't, maybe you can't see very well, but just above, uh, you can see that the, the lift shaft's been sort of capped off. And that was a part of the gas, um, gas protection mechanism that the station had during the Second World War. And Sounds just, vital with a group of men down there. Exactly. And you needed to have really good ventilation for that purpose as well. Mm. So that's basically what that room that you can see just there with the little window was but was basically kind of like a purification room wow. to kind of ventilate the entire site. Um, now, next I've got up, to say as well, Siddy, Siddy, can I just talk, quickly talk about that, that the chef? When I, uh, when I first joined the museum, that was the very first uh, place I went to as a disused station. And I still remember walking into that space. I've never been in a lift shaft before. And that one is so atmospheric. It's because it's a vent shaft, you've got cold air kind of dripping in from above. And you've got all these echoey sounds from outside. And it's, it's just such a memorable moment to walk into that space. So that, that for me was where uh, Hidalunda began for me. Yeah. 
I love it. Right, the next one, this is a Piccadilly line train whizzing past uh, Down Street Station. Fabulous. And, Fabulous. and I just love how those curves that those cable trays make uh, and, and just the, the, the colours that it, it's just such an experience to stand on those platforms and the trains are whizzing past and the people on those trains have absolutely no idea that you're there. There's just something really thrilling about it. And that was the secret bit of platform that the REC kept uh, for coming and going into the station without having to break cover at the station. With your little signal. Mm -hmm. mm. And then lastly, I decided to take this just because this gives people a sense of what was, you know, what, what the actual um, quarters or sleeping quarters were like. So you can see that the, this is a dormitory for, a, for an executive. You can just see it to the side there. There's a little bit of, uh, of remains of a shelf. There's also wallpaper on the walls. It just sort of gives you a sense of, it was a very small room, but quite a luxurious one, really, mm. for what it was. Um, and a bonus point is that just beyond there, you see there's like a round, well, part, part of a circle just in the corner there. Yeah. Well, Chris and I spotted this uh, a few years ago, and we were sort of wondering about it for quite some time, and uh, discovered later that it was a part of an old roundel, you know, those block red roundels. Wow. That you get at some old stations. Do you remember that, Chris? I do, yeah. It was painted on the wall, and we'd wondered about it for ages, because it looked like the right kind of shape for it, that you can't see any more of it. Um, and it wasn't until Sidney and I went to Brompton Road that we saw another one. So yeah, that's what it is painted on the wall. I love it. And that's Down Street. I love it. Don't forget, by the way, you can follow us on Instagram. There's Sidney Holloway, there's Chris Nix, and there's me, Alex Grundon. Plus follow LT Museum on Instagram. And also just down below, click the subscribe, and then you'll know all of the subsequent episodes that come your way. You can also go back and watch the other ones as well, because they're pretty cool. Uh, another lovely piece of correspondence was from Jem Skylark. He says, I hope you guys are well and keeping safe during COVID-19. Um, I've seen a few of your Hidden London Hangouts on YouTube. Highgate is where I grew up and I love that episode. I just wanted to make you aware that I run a football team on the London Underground, get this, uh, called Piccadilly FC. And uh, they, they're having a moquette um, football kit made. And we, well, I've been offered a, a version of it if I'd like it. And I think maybe the team should have it. You guys should have it as well. We could be the mascots handing around the oranges at lunch. I've I really hope, Alex, it's only the pattern they're having printed, because otherwise that's going to be one itchy, uh, itchy football <laughs> strip. And also, if it rains, they'll weigh twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> this would be great. Anyway, I'm up for it. I mean, I'm not a massive fan of football, but to wear Moquette, I think I might actually be persuaded to give it a go. I could go around there with my rattle, whip that out for the boys. Um, next, we went to 55 Broadway. There we go. I mean, I think... Oh. Really the the kind of the best well the most kind of interesting photo is uh, of course of the sculpture by Jacob Epstein uh, titled Day, which we discussed in the episode and just yeah. seeing it there kind of so beautifully centred into the, in, in the in the photograph um, I think is really nice and just gives what well, gives sort of gravitas to the statue itself. Really nice. Okay. I, I don't really need to say anything to uh, to that picture, do I? It sort of speaks for itself in many ways. It really does, yeah. I mean, what's nice is that you know it's it's still there and uh, and it's survived all these years. And and of course, we may have mentioned in the episode, but we may not, because that statue was allowed to stay. Uh, Fifty Five Broadway has often been referred to as sort of a, a temple of the arts because it was somewhere where where an artist was able to kind of bring his vision to life. Wait. And a cold day it was as well. Clearly taking right. winter. Mm. Mm. There we are. Thank you. Um, Mark Newman messaged us as well. Say hi, folks. My wife and I are loving the series. It's the highlight of our viewing week and always look forward to joining you on a Saturday night. It's a bit like we're all gate crashing a date night, isn't it? So, <laughs> hey, have a great one, kids. Um, uh, more so as we had some Hidden London tours arranged for April uh, to, to celebrate my wife's 40th birthday. Nothing terrifying, of, is it, about turning 40? I didn't mind at all turning 40. I was scared out my brains, uh, which was sadly cancelled for obvious reasons. Really hope you continue to do this for a while. Yeah, loving every minute. Thank you, Mark. We love you too. Then, after 55 Broadway, we went downstairs on the Northern Line to Euston. 
So there you can see remains of the old ticket hall at Melton Street. And, That's uh, beautiful. And what I'm highlighting, that is me in that photo, <laughs> in, wearing it? my loveliest high vis. Yeah. But, but look at the green, look at that lovely green that's been hidden by that grey paint. I know, isn't it beautiful? And, and it's one of the few remnants of that, that station building. And of course that building is being swept away due to HS2. So uh, just that lovely acanthus leaf detailing and just the fact that no matter how much you try, you know, you paint over it and uh, you try to kind of discard it, but still it, it remains and it and those colours peek through. So there we go for the first one. And the second one is of a tunnel that we discussed in the episode. You remember that secret tunnel that Chris and I talked about that was built in 1937, yep. which was, became a control room for the LMSR. Um, and one of the reasons you can sort of spot it really Im immediately here. Now, there have been modern uh, alterations to this tunnel. So you see that room that's been bricked up in, in there is, is a modern alteration. That's a switch room today. But you see just to the side that painting and that's kind of yellow uh, in, the, in the ceiling and then there's yep. a, a kind of green one to the bottom. That is something that we've spotted at several other, other, other places and we know that that's normally something that the railways did uh, during time of war uh, is painting, painting those kind of secret control rooms and their telephone exchanges etc in exactly those colours and I've actually got a good example of that a little bit later on. But that is the tunnel that we discussed in the episode that was built in 1937. And the little door that led into it is just at the kind of end of that corridor that you see on the right hand side. Um, anything you want to add, Chris? Nope, that's it. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Man of many words today. <laughs> he hasn't I got his little blocks to... out. And then episode seven, after Euston, the girls weren't with us. So it was all boys all the time, plus two girly guests. So we decided to talk about Moquette, one of my favourite subjects. I, as you can see, I've got a little bit behind me here, which is all rather lovely. Uh, Chris, it was a great episode, wasn't it? Yeah, we really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was good fun to indulge in a subject that I know we both like. I love it. And look, I just thought I'd show you this as well. This was hanging over the seat, but it fell off. Very nice. Loving a little bit of moquette there off the Met line. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Um, it's your cat's birthday, isn't it? It is, Alex. And um, as we've discussed before, cats really love moquette. So I've got something to show you. Um, <laughs> you just, just, just bear with me. What this, are you doing down might, there? <laughs> might take well, that's got big, moment. isn't it? Oh, blimey, look, yeah, I just been watching. Oh, no, not done yet. There we go. <laughs> now, <laughs> That is um, a, a scratching post, which I Could made, you just show uh, us the base, Chris? Could yeah, you just there show you go. That's a relief. There you go. Wow, that's yeah. a nice base. That's yeah. A <laughs> um, it's, um, yeah. it's made out of some, uh, some spare oak uh, worktops, um, just some offcuts. It's um, really nice. And, uh, the walker, yeah. isn't it? And do you happen to know what the maquette is, Alex? Um, oh, it's, it's the one off the bus, isn't it? It is. Well done. It's BEA and um, the, the cat that this is for is a ginger one. So that was the closest I could uh, I could get to it. So that's her birthday present for today. Ginger's going to love that. Ginger's going to love that. Gorgeous stuff. And then, of course, after we did the Moquette episode, we decided to go underground and overground all the time. It wasn't wombling. We went to Highgate. Oh, these are wicked pictures. So that is the, the station as it is now. Exactly. So just try in your mind's eye to imagine that instead of that kind of hoarding over the, over the, the tracks that you see on the right hand side and kind of to the left, um, that would have just been underground track. I mean, can you imagine, you know, something like a 96 stock coming in and, wow. uh, and, and, and kind of serving all of North London? It's been incredible. But of course, Beautiful. as we know, uh, that never happened. Now, another thing I just want to show another photo inside the bat tunnel which I just think is quite interesting Ooh. it shows that oval shape so nicely but also that photo is taken from uh, a side um, opening so all of those old um, tunnels those old steam tunnels had basically a, an opening so if you were working on the railway or something like that and then suddenly a train was coming in you could switch between the two tunnels using these tiny little gateways that are dotted all around um, 
it's quite quite sort of scary to think that's something that people did but uh, right. it, it's just extraordinary and it's it's just a lovely very atmospheric photo i think gorgeous 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 and then of course after we did highgate we decided to go down the dilly we went to piccadilly circus didn't we kids we certainly did yeah so here we have Piccadilly, and remember we talked about it having three entrances at the, in the episode, and the reason why they had to build underneath the, uh, the circus itself was because the Criterion Theatre was right next to it, and therefore you couldn't fit, basically fit escalators into the old station building. So that just shows up to us really neatly and nicely, I think. Now there we have the lift entrances in Piccadilly. Oh, my tiles again. Be still my beating tilers. I know, it's so nice. Um, it's just that colour is really unusual, I think. Um, and uh, it's, it's actually quite a bit dirtier down there than you, you realise. And those lift shafts are actually used for ventilation, as we, as we spoke about in the, the episode. Um, and there is also some great, some brilliant um, kind of, that opens out onto the platform of the Piccadilly line and, uh, and kind of, yeah, it gives a, it's, it's really quite interesting, I think. Um, Laura, remember when we were putting up those, um, those panels and uh, yeah, there's, the grime is extreme. Yeah, we also did a photo shoot for the booklet, I think you remember as well, Sid, with, um, with the photographer and he took us into the lift shaft and we had the crazy wind tunnel going on with our hair everywhere as well. That, that always reminds me of Piccadilly. Yeah, it takes a while to uh, wash your hair off. Degrime. <laughs> and there we have it. That's Piccadilly. I love it. And um, Laura, one of the things that we loved about Moorgate was just the cavernous madness of the place, wasn't it? Do you know what? Mor Moorgate's fantastic. And I, th I think I said in that episode as well that it was, it's the latest addition to the, to the Hidden London programme when we can be running tours. Um, and I think, I think we mentioned in Euston about the door moment. And obviously there's door moments at all of our sites, um, but we, we reflected on Euston being a fantastic door moment. And for Moorgate, if we can even coin this as a phrase, it's like a, a corner moment because with Moorgate, you twist and you turn and you're going up and down steps and in and out of different operational and non-operational parts. And there's just always a corner that you're kind of going around and then there's something amazing the other side of it, whether it's the fan or whether it's the great head shield or whether it's the tiles or the poster. So for, for me, Moorgate is about corners. Lovely. Let's have a quick look at some photographs. Wow, because, what's that? Well, this is, yeah. So this is something that um, is very difficult to get to. And that is the uh, bricked up entrance into that passageway that we talked about in the episode that was built in 1912 and closed in 1936. And the only way to get there is to walk up the uh, emer old emergency spiral staircase of the City and South London Railway. Um, and it's kind of very gloomy, all kind of been, been bricked up and the tiles have all been painted over. But the reason I brought that up is because look at the color. Oh, lovely. It's exactly the same as the colour I just showed you on those Euston, uh, that Euston tunnel, which is the secret one. So again, a bit of a mystery, which is something that we love to throw out there to our viewers, is that that's clearly the, the, the exact same colours and the exact same sort of uh, colour scheme. But we don't actually know very much about who used these disused parts of Moorgate Station during the Second World War. So that's just a glimpse into uh, what probably was some sort of office or uh, an accommodation for, for staff. We know that it was an accommodation, a shelter for staff members, but we don't have any more details than that. That was fabulous, but an amazing canter, even more stuff that we've not seen on any of these Hidden London Hangouts before, all encapsulated in one episode, we love it. So that was our series one, if you like, there are some amazing things that have come out of this series and in our notes, queries and questions, we may have made a bit of a revelation. You'll remember that in previous episodes, we were looking at the tiles and there were stenciled letters onto some of the tiles, a G, S and an F. And we've been completely befuddled by this until now, which is really quite cool. And this is 
a message that was sent to us after the Highgate episode by a guy called Liam, really nice bloke, he's a paramedic, used to be a London transport apprentice. And he said he thinks, because he used to talk to poster uh, appliers, you know, the painters, the people who used to glue the things on the wall, he thinks they are poster sites. So G, S and F are different types of poster site. G means general posters, F means foreign posters, and S means station posters. And this has been, there's a, there's a document online, I don't know what you guys make of this, but if he's right, Liam has, thanks to the Hidden London Hangouts, solved the biggest mystery I've ever thought about with the London Underground. I think it's pretty plausible, um, and I think uh, we will scurry away and uh, seek to verify that. We yeah. love you, Liam, for even giving us a lead on this, because it comes from a very, very interesting place. There are others, by the way, other notes, queries and questions. Mark Griffiths on Insta. Um, this is, I, I've now got to the point where our lovely viewers are writing my jokes for me. They don't, uh, they, they know my sense of humour, they know our sense of humour. And Mark Griffiths 82 said, I've sometimes seen a sign saying private rod on doors. Does someone have a rude sense of humour or is this something important? And I replied, can you write my gags more often? This is genius. What do you reckon, Chris? Private rod. Uh, um, District Dave website covered this one uh, a little while ago. Uh, rail operating department. Uh, but wow. it is a great one. I think, I think many a commuter has smiled at that and wondered what's behind the door. I love it. So it could well be rail operating department. So Private Rod is not someone I might have met out on a Saturday night then. Uh, no, and no need to salute or stand to attention. Thank goodness, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Gary John Lawrence as well messaged this one. Uh, this was great. I love autocorrect. Has the tube map ever been produced in an animal? Was the first question. Correction. In, in oh an my animal, God. Not, an, not an animal. Enamel <laughs> was the thing. Enamel. So has it ever been produced in an animal or enamel? And the answer, of course, uh, is yes. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to see them, uh, once we're reopened, then the depot has uh, has a, a lovely collection of them. Um, and um, as Sidney mentioned, I think you can see one out in the wild at Temple Station. And actually, on the animal point, I do believe there has been a uh, artistic version of the uh, of the uh, map produced, which had picked out different animals in it. I'm sure I recall that correctly. It's a few years ago now. <laughs> Lovely bits of information. And one other nose Korean question, and this is from Ian Ford. When we did our competition for you, and we showed you that picture of a tube station that was mocked up for films, and we asked what was wrong, there were three rails, two running rails and a power rail, but it needed a fourth to be authentic for the system that we have now. Ian Ford dropped the question. Whew, what a drop he left as well. He said, the City and South London Railway, was it not three rail? It didn't have a fourth power rail. And he'd be right, Chris, wouldn't he? Uh, yeah, he'd be absolutely right. In fact, if I remember correctly, I think one of the photos we showed in the episode uh, shows it with uh, three rails when it was when it was first built. Uh, of course, by the time the film was being made, that had long since been converted to four rails. So there, there weren't any examples there uh, by that point. But yeah, no, he's absolutely right. And um, we do have a couple of photos that show that. I love it. And, um, and I guess that concludes series one of the Hidden London Hangouts, I suppose. It's a bit of a strange emotional experience, really, because for me, I've made three wonderful friends out of this. I've learned so much about a tube system that I thought I knew pretty well as well. And I've also got, as a personal experience, I've seen how hard people who work in museums work. And um, this is a very strange time. We've been caught unawares by COVID-19 and we've been locked down for weeks and weeks and weeks and we're sick of it we need our hairs cutting but uh, from a just a little personal message from me when things start to change and you get the opportunity to go out to museums and theatres and all those sorts of places go because if we don't, we lose these amazing sources of information that we are so lucky to have. So go to the theatre, go to museums, go and enjoy these places because you don't just ent get entertained, you actually learn something as well. I've really, really enjoyed doing this for the last 11 weeks, whatever it is, and uh, I really hope you have too. And certainly the comments that have come in to us would indicate that you have. So Laura, thank you from the bot bottom of my heart for just being amazing every week. Oh, right back at you, Alex. Um, 
I, I hope that the viewers have enjoyed watching this as much as we all have um, creating it. I know that I can speak on behalf of all of us, that it has helped us through this kind of crazy, uncertain, strange time as well. Um, and, you know, I've actually learned quite a lot as well. I'm normally the kind of planner um, and deliverer and kind of operations behind the scenes. So I've actually really enjoyed sitting here in my little minutes of downtime and listening to you guys and finding out lots of facts and things as well. So I feel like I've, I've kind of been a viewer as well. So that's been a really nice experience for me. Um, and yeah, next series, we will see you all then. And I hope everybody stays well and stays safe. Siddy, we love you too. <clears throat> love you too. Um, what a ride it's been. I was just thinking about it. I, I, it feels like it's been so long and yet so short at the same time. Uh, it's been a, such a pleasure making these with you guys and just, I mean, everyone, you know, welcoming us into their homes on Saturday nights and, you know, taking part in everything that we're doing. It's just been a real joy. It's made this um, lockdown so much easier. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to you guys. Um, you know, couldn't have done it. Well, obviously not. Couldn't have done it without you. But honestly, I don't think I could have done this lockdown without you. Oh, lovely. And Chris, this all began in a conversation over a pizza and Prosecco and a nose around an old tube station. Look where it got us. It did. It felt like a bit of a leap of faith uh, when we were putting together episode one, but it's been great to do it with three wonderful people. And of course, our unseen extra member of the team, Harriet, who, uh, who puts the, the beginnings and the ends and brings it to you via our YouTube channel. So I'm um, yeah, like, like Laura said, I can't imagine um, a nicer bunch of people to have done this with. And um, thank you uh, for watching, everybody. Oh, um, nice. it, we couldn't have, couldn't have done it without, the, uh, without our lovely audience. And we do hope you want to be back for, for a new season. Brilliant stuff. Well, look, it's not the end. It's actually just the beginning. And we are having a bit of a pause. There's some stuff coming up. So keep an eye on our Instagram posts and also the YouTube channel. Follow LT Museum, follow Alex Grundon on Instagram, follow Chris Nix and follow City Holloway. And there will be something, a few little surprises coming down the pipe very, very, or around down the tunnel, actually, very, very soon indeed. It has been such a joy. And thanks to the London Transport Museum for having a bit of faith in me as well. So for me, Alex Grundon and the wonderful team, have yourself a great day and stay safe. Thanks, Alex. Bye. Bye. Bye.